The Bulls start the season with their first four preseason games. Join me as we discuss the games, the good, the ugly, what the Bulls need to do to not completely suck this year, and my predictions for the coming season and upcoming games. The series premiere of Raging Bulls. Let's do this. Preseason game number one, Bulls at Pelicans. I knew that we were going to be bad, but the Bulls start off this game super sloppy. The first thing I noticed here is the Bulls were playing with a lot of speed and shooting a heck of a lot of threes. I mean, they were just launching them up there. It felt to me like mostly everyone had the green light. Miritich still seems to me like he's not the three-point threat we really want. There were rumors that he put on 22 pounds of muscle this offseason. Maybe that's so he can be more efficient in the paint. Time will tell, I guess. Paul Zipser really has started strong and is looking like a really nice option at small forward. That begs the question, would you start him over Meritage or would you play Zipser at the three and Meritage at the four? I think the Bulls have some flexibility here, especially with the run and gun style that Hoiberg seems to want to play. I was surprised to see that Hoiberg started Jerry and Grant over Chris Dunn, but that's a decision that should work itself out. Justin Holiday has been a surprise to me. We had him 2015 for a stint, but with Jimmy Butler playing so many minutes, I doubt we got to see his true potential. Blankney showed some nice moves and athleticism. I hope the Bulls sign him to more than a two-way contract. Everybody knows that the Bulls have plenty of cap room. Also, at the end of the game, who is Eddie? Well, we found out. I look forward to seeing a little more of him. Cristiano Felicio also looks nice this game and led all Bulls scorers. Winning this game honestly gave me hope for the season and the fact that we'll at least be entertaining to watch. Was this win the norm or was it the exception? I feel like it might have been the exception because the Pelicans weren't playing their main guys a whole lot. Needless to say, the Bulls end up winning this game 113 to 109. Preseason game number two, Bulls at Mavericks. This was probably one of the most depressing games, man. Though I did feel proud that we managed to hang in there with the Mavericks for the first three quarters. The only thing I think brings me some comfort is that to this point, we still haven't seen our full lineup with Markkanen and Levine. This felt like the type of game where they say you live by the three, you die by three, and we died hard this match. Kind of makes me think that this might be indicative of the regular season and that there'll be some games where we hang in there and sneak out a win, and then there'll be games like these where we're just going to look really bad and get blown out. The only highlights were really Paul Zipser, who's been really solid, Robin Lopez, and to a lesser extent, Bobby Portis. I feel like Bobby Portis has shown decently well and is ready for a breakout season. I say this because he just looks so versatile to me. He can take you in the paint, take that outside the paint jumper, and take some three-pointers. If he continues to develop, I believe he'll be a solid player, though many might disagree with me. There's also going to be a fight at the power forward position between him and Markkanen. I think he probably begins the season as the starter and then Markkanen will win the position eventually. The game was so bad at times that we couldn't even hit simple layups and that worries me. A play that surprised me was that block off the backboard by Jerry Grant. That was awesome. That was an amazing play that I wasn't expecting from him and makes the choice at starter between him and Dunn a little harder to make. The defense and the mental toughness of the Bulls worries me as well of how badly they broke down in that final quarter. The Bulls end up dropping this one 118-71. to Preseason game number three, Bulls versus Bucks. The Bulls were hitting on all cylinders this game. If there was ever an example of hoi ball, this game would be it. A fast-paced, three-point shooting affair that was so entertaining to watch. Holiday was so fun to watch in this game with 21 points to lead all bull scorers. I'm amazed at how good he was from the three-point line. He went five for seven with a shooting percentage of 71.4%. What? That is incredible. That's almost Ben Gordon-esque, which ironically is the number he's wearing on his jersey. 
Wearing that number seven brings back so many memories of Ben Gorn just tearing up opponents from the three-point line. Either way, he's got huge shoes to fill. Speaking of three-point shooting, Nikola Meritich finally woke up from his winter slumber and gave us a huge three for six from the three-point line. I think at this point we can mark the man as consistently inconsistent, and that's fine as long as he can contribute in other ways and as long as we have other players who can stretch the floor from the three-point line. Now, let's talk Denzel Valentine. He's one player I believe will make a huge jump this year with much more playing time. He's been surprising the heck out of me with his three-point shooting. Shooting five for seven this game, it surprised me because last year he shot at 35%, which isn't bad by any means, but I believe that he'll really blossom at, as a three-point shooter and all-around solid starter this year. I'd like to see him raise that percentage to the upper 30s or low 40s. This was Chris Dunn's best game so far with 11 points and four assists. Firstly, I have to say that I love his sight at the point guard position at six foot four and super athletic. I feel like that gives him the upper hand on his opponents. This game would have been even better for him if he wouldn't have gotten injured. I hope he's not out too long. Last I heard he was gonna be out two to four weeks with a dislocated finger. One play from Jerry and Grant that stands out to me is when he hesitated to take a wide open three. I mean, he was wide open, guys. Nobody around him and he passes the ball. Really, dude? Really? Take the freaking shot, man. I think that's one shot that Dunn would have taken without hesitation. I think the competition from the starting point guard position will be in full throttle when Dunn returns. Either way, the Bulls end up winning this contest 114 to 101. Preseason game number four, Bulls versus Pelicans. The Bulls welcomed the Pelicans to the United Center and I thought, man, we beat this team at their house and we can pull off a win at ours as well. But I was wrong. The Pelicans played their main guys big minutes and pulled out the win even though several Bulls players put up double digit games. First, let's start with Robin Lopez because I feel like I've been avoiding him sort of purposely just because we already know what he's going to bring to the table. He's probably one of the only solid proven players we have out there right now besides Meritich, and even that's debatable. Throughout the first four games, he's averaged double digits, and that's honestly what you should expect from your starting big man. I have no complaints from Robin Lopez. He brings it every night defensively as well. So Denzel Valentine's continues his sharp shooting, going three for seven from the three-point line and putting up 15 points once again. I believe he's going to be a crucial player for the Bulls this season. I gotta bring up Markkanen because he's going to be so pivotal to our success as a team as well. He only scored four points and went zero for six from the three-point line. And even though he's on a minute restriction with a back issue, I think it needs to be pointed out that he hasn't started well. I have yet to see anything special about him. I hope he adjusts to the speed of the NBA game, though I think he's going to be just fine in time. Hopefully by mid-season, he'll have his game going in time for Levine's return. By that time, we'll be able to really see what the Bulls can do. I want to give Cristiano Felicio a mention just because he had 10 boards this game. His scoring, except for the first game, hasn't been anything to write home about, but if he can help out on the boards, I'll take that as a win. Also, how about we not play RC Diacono much? The play at the end of the first half was just pathetic and looked amateurish, even though he physically looks a lot like a combination of John Pax and a Steve Kerr. <laughs> Anyways, the Bulls end up losing this one 108-95. Which brings up another issue. This team really struggles defensively. They've allowed over 100 points every single game. I feel like Hoiberg is the anti-tips, and I really like more of a balance instead of the focus being solely on offense. All right, prediction time for the next couple weeks worth of games. First, the Bulls play the Cavaliers at Cleveland as we reunite with Derrick Rose and Dwayne Wade. I predict the complete shellac in this game. It's not even going to be close unless the Cavs play their scrubs more than their rotation players. The Bulls then play the Raptors at home in their final preseason tune-up game. I believe the Bulls will win this one by a very small margin to end the preseason 3-3. Three and three. 
We'll then start out the regular season at Toronto versus the Raptors, where I think we'll lose. Then face the Spurs, there goes another loss. Then finally, another loss at Cleveland on the 24th. Um, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we start the season out 0-3. I don't know. Alright guys, thanks for joining me. This is my first time talking about my Bulls, so let me know what you think of the show, what I can do to improve it, and what you thought of my opinions below. If you liked it, remember to smash that like button. It'll really help me out a lot. And if you loved it, subscribe for more, because I'll be doing this show every couple of weeks. See you next time, and let's go Bulls!